83 cents a month. Yes, only 83 cents a month to receive each month the Nostalgia USA. The only digital magazine that has over 12 hours of audio and video integrated throughout each issue. Now, I know that everyone listening to this podcast now over 11 years, all free, can afford 83 cents a month. So I'm asking that everyone who enjoys my podcast subscribe to the Nostalgia USA today today, which is a real value. Think about it. 83 cents a month, you get this fantastic Nostalgia USA digital magazine and all the podcast. What a deal. Go to oldtimeradiodvd.com today to subscribe. Guaranteed, you'll be glad you did. Let's now join our featured presentation. The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax Products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie, with music by the King's Ben and Billy Mills Orchestra. know a good many women who made a resolution a year ago and are still keeping it up. They resolved to practice protective housekeeping with genuine Johnson's Wax, and are they pleased? They tell me that not only are their homes lovelier than ever, but they've saved themselves hours of work, too. The fact is, things that are Johnson Wax do get lovelier with every application. I don't mean just floors, but many other things in your homes. Furniture, picture frames, ornaments, tables, doors, and refrigerators. All of these things have a lovely, lustrous, satin-smooth polish that adds immensely to the beauty of your home when they're protected with Johnson's Wax. You save yourself work, of course, because dirt and dust don't cling to a smooth waxed surface so readily. Just a light dusting with a cloth restores their lovely luster in a jiffy. The year's only a week old. How about it? Let's resolve to have a lovelier, cleaner, healthier home in 1946 with Johnson's Wax. Kramer's Drugstore in Westville Vista always has an interesting window display about this time of year. It consists of a glass fish bowl full of navy beans, and you're supposed to guess how many. Now, if you don't think that's a pretty fascinating exhibit, get a load of the crowd on the sidewalk, which includes Mr. McGee of Fibber McGee and Molly. Somebody could win first prize by betting the same number of beans that won last year. It could be far off. They say Kramer puts a big rock in the middle of the bowl and piles of beans around it. Who won the contest last year? Kramer's mother-in-law. <laughs> My gosh, there ought to be some way to figure this thing out scientific. Yeah, well, why don't you do it, McGee? Oh, you think I can't, wise guy? Yeah, okay, by George, I'll show you. One side there, fellas. I got business. Yeah. Off. Hey, Molly. Molly. Hey, Molly. Get your voice down to a shriek, dearie. I'm right here. Heavenly days, what do you got? A fishbowl and ten pounds of beans. Well, that's nice. If there's anything we need more than a diving helmet or a high wheel bicycle, it's a fishbowl and ten pounds of beans. Now, don't insult the quarterback till you know the score, Tootsie. <laughs> I'm going to win Kramer's How Many Beans in the Fishbowl Contest. Oh, for goodness sakes, yes, McGee, sir. not another contest. You were just in one last week, remember? And I won, too, did I? Well, <laughs> I will say it was nice of Mr. Kramer to let you bring his fishbowl and beans home with you. Or did you just steal them out of his window? These are my very own. Oh? Uh-huh. I purchased them. <laughs> I'm going to count beans into this bowl till it's full and enter the total figure in the contest, and bingo, the McGee's have just won a brand new radio. Well, isn't that a little unethical, sweetheart? Aren't you supposed to guess how many beans in the bowl? Ah, Pata, leave the guesswork to the peasants. <laughs> I'm going to do this thing scientific. What have I got a brain for if it ain't to count beans into a bowl? Well, you got 
help me, dearie. That must be what it's for, all right. <laughs> now, let's see. Help me clear off this table, Molly. I want to get to work right away. There. Now, I'll pour the beans out on the table. Oh, dear. I love them. You've taken enough beans out of circulation to reduce Boston to a crossroads village. <laughs> You'd be surprised to see how many beans this bowl will hold. Well, here we go, laughing and scratching. One, two, three. Oh, uh, wait a minute, McGee. Huh? I just happened to think, has Mr. Kramer a 99-year lease on that store? Hmm? I'd hate to have him go out of business before you finish counting these beans. <laughs> oh, this won't take so long. How many beans have I counted so far? Uh, three, I think. Oh, yeah. Three. That makes four. I thought you said three. It was three before you said four. You mean before... Uh, oh, oh, I got to start all over. <laughs> yes, no. One, two, three. Come in. Oh, hello there, Mrs. Carstairs. McGee, it's Mrs. Carstairs. Seven, eight, higher. Nine, Carsty, ten... Is Mr. McGee checking up on the grocer again, my dear? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, he's counting those beans for a contest, Millicent. Oh, my goodness. It must be wonderful to be married to a man who can amuse himself so easily. My husband has to resort to doing jigsaw puzzles or planning a world cruise or tickling the upstairs me. <laughs> 23, 24... 25. Say, uh, maybe we better go in the other room and leave himself here with his beans, Millicent. I must be running along anyway, my dear. Careless girl that I am, I was playing my accordion without my girdle on and pinched myself rather badly. <laughs> I, uh, wanted, uh, I wanted Dr. Gamble's office number in the medical building. Do you know it? Oh, of course, dear. It's 816. Or is it 618? McGee, what is Dr. Gamble's office number in the medical building? 618. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Don't mention it, kiddo. 618. 619. Well, good day, my dear. Goodbye, Millicent. 620. 621. Uh, pardon me, dearie, but aren't you a little ahead of yourself? Huh? There aren't more than 35 beans in that bowl. 622. Well, there must be. I've been counting without missing a beat. 623. 622. Oh, my gosh, you're right. What? Now, how do you suppose I did that? No, I've got it. Now i got to start all over oh, again. Dear. Oh, no. Oh, well, it might have been worse. I might have been up in the thousands something. <laughs> One, two... Billy Mills and the orchestra, and let it snow. Seventy-two, eleven hundred seventy-three, eleven hundred 
Hey, this fishbowl's filling up, you know it. The bottom is practically covered solid. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. You'll win that radio about the time television becomes obsolete. Ah. Worry about that, my dear girl. It's going pretty fast now, and by the time I get... Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. 1177. Hi, Doc. 1177. Give me a pencil. Write that down. 1177. Hi, Doc. You said that. I did? Yes. And incidentally, Einstein, what are you doing? Your homework? <laughs> He's counting beans in the bowl to win Kramer's drugstore contest, Doctor. You're going to do it, too, Aerosmith. I got the scientific approach. All them other yokels... Other yokels is correct. <laughs> All them other yokels will stand and gawp at the fishbowl in Kramer's window and make a stab in the dark. I go at it intelligent and come up with the right answer. Well, within five or six bins. <laughs> look, look, bubblehead. I am no mathematician, but I do know that in computing numbers, one must take into consideration the factors of variability. What on earth is that? Or those? Break that down into one-syllable words, bone bender. <laughs> Remember, I'm just a barefoot boy with cheeks of tan whistling merrily down the road of life. I doubt if I can explain the mechanism of a hacksaw so you'd understand it, Jim Dome. But in counting these beans, you should ascertain if you're using the same size navy beans that Kramer used. Also the same size bowl with no false bottom and the identical thickness. Then you must allow for the refraction of light through the drugstore window, which would make his beans appear larger or smaller, plus a consideration of atmospheric conditions. Dampness, for instance, would make the beans swell, thus reducing the number. Have I succeeded in leaving you utterly confused? <laughs> Are you by any chance entering this contest too, fatso? <laughs> yes. Ah. I thought so. Sure. Well, you can't blame a man for trying to discourage his competition. Uh huh. But I've got to get along, kiddies. Say, are you through with this copy of Field and Stream, McGee? I missed mine this month. Oh, go ahead. Take it along, butcher boy. <laughs> Anything that'll teach you how to hunt and fish will help your next appendix operation. <laughs> Righto. Now, let me see. Where was I? Eleven hundred and something. You wrote it down. I know I did, but right out of what did I write it down on? Right here on the table. Huh? Oh, my gosh, that magazine. Heavenly days, the one the doctor took. That's why he wanted to take it, the underhanded old pirate. He saw me write the number down and wanted to mix me up. Well, that's too bad now, dearie. Going to forget the whole thing and give up? No, sir, by George. I got my dandruff up now. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pour them out and start over again. Oh. I'll show that fat-headed old one, two, three, four. Hello, folks. Hello there, Mr. Wilcox. Six, seven. Hi, Junie. Seven, seven. <clears throat> I guess I can remember that all right. Hey, I don't like to be nosy, Mac, but are you doing what you seem to be doing? Counting beans? You guessed it, tall, dark, and commercial. <laughs> He's checking the number of beans that will go in the fishbowl so he can win a radio on the Kramer's Drugstore Contest, Mr. Wilcox. Well, you'll never get them counted that way. What you need is more room. What you mean? This table is too small. Pour them out on the kitchen floor where you can count better. I can count on this table, all right. Not the way you can count on that kitchen linoleum oh. if you use Johnson's self-polishing glow coat on it. Oh, dear. Why, with glow coat on your linoleum, you can count on it lasting many times as long, looking infinitely more beautiful and saving you hours and hours of housework. Yeah, but what that got to do... You can count on being able to wipe up spots and spill things with the greatest of ease. You can count on it being so much easier to take care of. Just pour out a little glow coat, spread it around, and let it dry, and in 20 minutes or less, you can count on a lovely spark. Okay, Waxy, okay, okay. You made it. <laughs> he whiz. Don't whip your horse after you pass the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> you got any other suggestions? Otherwise, sit down and be quiet. I got a lot of beans to count here. Now, don't be impolite, McGee. I'm sure Mr. Wilcox is only trying to help. And I can help, too, Mac. I got another great idea. Yeah? If I can only locate a batch of them, I'll be back in half an hour. It'll cut your work way down. What's that, Mr. Wilcox? Jumping beans. Huh? Let them leap into the fishbowl by themselves. <laughs> but you better start doing it the old way in the meantime. <laughs> Jumping beans, if that wasn't the silk. 
Oh, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> hey, I better get going. I wish there was some easier way to... Oh, I got it. Give me a teacup, will you, Molly? I got an idea. So have I, but if I'm smart, I'll keep it to myself. You better keep counting while I'm gone. Now. Okay, okay, okay. She ain't kidding. This guppy globe is beginning to look as big as a rose bowl. Ah, <laughs> oh, well. Nineteen. Twenty. Oh, now, who? Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hi, Peeny. Long time no seat yourself on a chair and relax. <laughs> You don't mind my going ahead with my work? Oh, sure I don't, I betcha. Thanks. 21, 22... I 20... know how it is when somebody's trying to do arithmetic, I betcha. Mm-hmm. You just hate to be interrupted. Yeah. <clears throat> That's right, sis. 23, 24... I know I do anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody does. 25, 26... Oh, do you know how many presents I got for Christmas, mister? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you? Mm-hmm. I got 15... Gee, imagine, 15 presents. Well, good for you, sis. 15, 16, 17. Holy Jokes only got 12. 12, huh? Mm-hmm. 12, 13, 14. I got a dandy set of building blocks with the alphabet on them. 26 of them. Hmm, that's mm-hmm. fine. 26, 27. Tw- hey, look, sis. Hmm? Wait a minute till I write this down. I don't want to get thrown off my count. What no. was that again? Oh, yeah, 27. Now, look, sis, I'm doing some very important work. If I give you a quarter, will you scram out of here? No, I got a quarter. Hmm. Well, what'll you take to beat it? A story. Oh. You tell dandy stories, mister. Will you tell me one, hmm, will you please, hmm, will you, hmm? Hmm, oh, okay. Oh, well, let's see. Ever hear the one about Gus the Grub? No, I didn't, I bet you. <laughs> well, sir, once upon a time, there was a little grub named Gus. You know what a grub is, sis. Oh, sure I do, I bet you. It's a little baby cattle piddle. <laughs> Caterpillar. That's what I said, mister. Caterpillar. You're saying caterpillar, sis. Well, what'd you say? I said caterpillar. That's what I said, caterpillar. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, this little Gus was a very ugly little caterpillar. Er, <laughs> this k- pat, uh, k- caterpillar. You almost said it right, mister. <laughs> a very ugly little caterpillar. He was kind of green and brown and had orange spots on him. Oh, <laughs> oh gee. Yes, sir. <laughs> Gus was really a creep. <laughs> All day long, he'd inch himself along a lilac leaf, trying to hold back the tears when the other cattle pit, or when the other <laughs> insects and beetles and birds and bees would, they'd poke fun at him for being so ugly. Ah, poor little Gus. Ah, poor little Gus. Yeah. Oh, now cheer up, sis. It's got a happy ending. Well, sir, one day, Gus couldn't take it any longer. He crawls up onto a tree, and he spins a little nest around himself and just gives up. Oh, gee, did he, did he die? No, no, no. He, he thought he did, but he didn't. He just went to sleep. And one day in the spring, he felt the sun on his back, and he found his cocoon had broke open, and there he was, a beautiful butterfly. Oh, goody. Yes, sir. Gus was now a gorgeous creature. Flew around and heard the ladybugs whistling at him. (laughs) And the potato bugs giving him the eye. (laughs) And he lived happily ever after. And you know what the moral to the story is, sis? No. Never complain about the grub, because you can't tell what's cooking tomorrow. (laughs) Now, beat it, will you? Sure I will, I bet you. And thank you for the story, mister. Say, is it going to take you long to get all those things in that bowl? Oh, quite a while, Teeny, I'm afraid. The way I'm doing it, I... Well, then I'll help you, mister. Hmm? Here. Here's two handfuls in the bowl. No, no, hey, don't do that. Get out the The King's Men singing Dr. Lawyer, Indian Chief. There's a doctor living in your town. There's a lawyer and an Indian, too. Need a doctor, lawyer, or Indian chief. Could love you any more than I do. There's a barrel of fish in the ocean. And a lot of little birds in the blue. Need a 
fish nor fowl, says the wise old owl, could love you any more than I do. No, 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 it couldn't be true that anyone else could love you like I do. I'm gonna warn all the dead I mix that you're the chick with the slickest tricks, and every tick of my ticker ticks. Are you follow through? Tell the doctor to stick to his practice. Tell the lawyer man to settle his case. Tell the engine chief to take his Tommy Hawk and go back to little rain in the face. Cause you know, no, no, it couldn't be true that anyone else could love you like I do. And confidentially, I confess. I sent a note to the local press that I'll be changing my home address for you follow through. Tell the doctor to stick to his patience. Tell the lawyer man to settle his case. Tell the Indian chief to take his Tommy Hawk and go back to Little Rain in the face. Cause you know, no, no, it couldn't be true that anyone else could love you like I do. Nobody else could love you like I do. No, 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 why, McGee, you're wonderful. Yeah. All you have to do is fill the teacup, dump it in the bowl, and you have 329 <laughs> more beans. Why, that's marvelous. Yeah, I was thinking about patenting it, but I guess there ain't anything basic about putting beans in a teacup. <laughs> Look, I'll show you how it works. I got the teacup full of beans, you see? Yeah. I dump it in the fish bowl, thus. Right down the new total, which is now 397. Then I refill the teacup like this. One, two, three. <laughs> So I get 329 again, see? Isn't it wonderful what the human mind can do when it... Come in. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Fine, thank you, Molly. And you? Just splendid, Your Honor. And how are you, McGee? 17, 18, swell, the trivia. 19, 20. Excuse my not shaking hands. I'm busy counting beans. Well, <laughs> every man to his own hobby, I suppose. I once knew a chap who spent his life carving wooden chains out of ten-foot poles. Where did he get the ten-foot poles? Ah, I was hoping you'd ask me that, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> he got them from people who wouldn't use one to touch a man who was always counting bees. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is no hobby, Latrivia. I'm finding out how many beans this fishbowl will hold so I can win the contest in Kramer's Drugstore's window. Do you mean to tell me, McGee, that you are actually counting out enough beans to fish that fill bowl, uh, fill that fish bowl? How else uh, would you find out how many it holds, Your Honor? Why, I would simply compute the volume of the fish bowl by a rather commonplace mathematical process available to anyone who happened to attend high school. How? <laughs> You merely take the circumference of the bowl, multiply it by the depth squared over pi. Any particular it... kind? <laughs> Any particular kind of what? Pi, Mr. Mayor. You said pi, didn't you? Oh, yes, but the kind of pi I was referring to... You didn't refer to any particular kind, Latrivia. Yeah, that's why I asked. I... Mathematically, McGee, there is only one kind of pi, and that is... Uh, maybe of... that's why mathematicians always look so hungry. <laughs> Only one kind of pie, for goodness sakes. I don't suppose you'd use a custard pie or any of them soft kinds for a job like this. That'd be pretty messy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. (laughs) Now, let's get this thing straight. Hmm? When I said pie, I was only referring to the Greek pie. Well, of course, if you prefer Greek pie to homemade pie, Mr. Mayor, I can only... I... I do not prefer Greek pie. It is not a matter of preference. You can't eat the kind of pie I mean. Didn't you ever hear of 31416? Ah, go on. There aren't that many kinds of pie. (laughs) After the different berry pies, all you got left... Stop it, McGee. Stop it. Will you understand once and for all that the pie I mean is a mathematical term? It's a figure. An indefinite 
figure. Yeah, you eat Greek pie all your life, bud, and that's exactly what you'll have, an indefinite figure. <laughs> I knew a guy once that ate that... Stuff. I have never encountered such stupidity in all my days. Ooh. <laughs> Never to have heard of such a thing as pie. Such colossal, abysmal ignorance. Why, anybody who ever... Pie is simply a... Some people... You... I... 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 I'm sorry, McGee. I was merely trying to get you the volume of the bowl to simplify your problem. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Would that tell him how many beans it holds? Uh, no. Well, then how do I find out? As the Countess said when her husband dropped ashes on the rug. Count! <laughs> we must have said something that upset him, McGee. No, it's just indigestion with him, I think. And no wonder. Imagine on three, one, four, one, six kind of pies. Oh, well, I'm going to finish this job. Three, one, four, er, 26. You know, I'm awfully proud of you for counting all those beans, dearie. How many did you have for a total? 9,707. That's the figure I'm going to give Kramer. Well, come on, let's go in. Hi, Kramer. You got a minute? Oh, hello, McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. What can I do for? Well, McGee thought... Oh, excuse me a minute. Mr. Shaw, please. Sorry, Mr. Kramer. What was he doing, Kramer? Walking backwards again. He says so many products are spelled that way now, he can fill orders more easily. (laughs) Now then, what was he? Well, McGee has his estimate of the bean bowl already, Mr. Kramer. And I'm a sure winner, too, boy. That is, if there's nothing phony about your fish bowl. Oh, there isn't anything phony, I assure you. Just an ordinary fish bowl. Want to examine it? Yes, if it isn't too much trouble. Oh, not at all. I'll just reach into the window and get it. Uh, here you are, McGee. Huh. Take a look. No, no, you, you hold it. Uh, that's it. Oh, thanks, Crane. Well, there certainly doesn't seem to be anything wrong with... Whoops! Oh, McGee! Oh, Heavenly geez, the contest is over and nobody won. Oh, gee. I'm sorry, Kramer. I didn't... Oh, that. forget it, McGee. I'm delighted. What? Huh? That fishbowl stunt was getting pretty stale anyway. Oh. This year, I'll have a real contest. Oh, Mr. Shaw! Yes, Mr. Kramer? Bring me that empty barrel from the back room. Ha-ha! <laughs> now we'll make it a real contest, McGee. A whole barrel full of beans. Ah, oh, Shaw. Did you speak to me, Mr. <laughs> McGee? Uh, no. No, come on, Mom. <laughs> The wives of men in service have had to learn housekeeping the hard way, many of them. We've received letters from many Army and Navy wives telling us how they've improved shabby linoleum floors with glow coat. A letter just received ends with this paragraph. My husband is home now, it reads, and in a few weeks we'll move to a home of our own. One of the first items on my list of musts will be Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. You may be sure I'll never accept a substitute for it again. There just couldn't be any substitute for Johnson's products. Well, of course, we're glad to have people feel that way about glow coat and other Johnson's wax polishes. The fact remains that a very great many do. Glow coat is a wonderful floor polish. It gives your linoleum and other floors great beauty. It gives them protection. And it saves you hours and hours of work because it's self-polishing. It needs no rubbing or buffing. <laughs> Six hundred and nine, six hundred and ten, six hundred and eleven. Hey, Molly, what time is it? Just after midnight, dearie. Oh, that late? Well, I guess I better finish this in the morning. Help me out of this barrel, will you? <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Good night. Good night, all. a very important announcement. Next Tuesday night, we welcome back our old friend, Bill Thompson. Bill rejoins us after almost three years in the Navy to bring us again his famous characters, Wallace Wimple and the old-timer. And now this is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.